How protective do we really need to be of our children? Bushy, Hertfordshire. And just how dependent are they on us? These girls, what would happen if children were actually left to live on their own for a week, without adults? Ten boys from Bushy and Hertfordshire were chosen to live by themselves in this house for five days. Aged 11 and 12, none of them had met beforehand. The house and garden were filled with toys, games, books and paints. The kitchen was stocked with food. Cameras were put in the bedrooms during to monitor day, the boys at night. The ten girls will have so during the day, there was a camera crew in the house. So if they need help from an adult, the crew didn't speak the nurse, to the boys. They can only intervene for reasons of safety. And if they don't like it, they can go home. <laughs> the first the boys saw of their new home was when they arrived at 10.30 one Monday morning. <laughs> there are two bedrooms, one with six beds and the other with four. There was a bell the boys could ring at any time if they needed help. They could speak to the production team, a nurse, their parents, or to a child psychiatrist Some of the girls who each had met friends. beforehand. They were also free to leave the house at any time. Chaz and Kaylee are the first to check out what food there is. Upstairs, there were two bedrooms. The larger one had six beds. The smaller one had four. They've been in the house an hour. Alicia finds the paint. Ten cameras had been left out for the boys to use. George was the first to take a picture. There were also ten water pistols. It was Daniel who got hold of the biggest. Meanwhile, Gabrielle was trying to paint it Once the ice was broken, everyone began to introduce themselves. Rather than join in with the painting, two of the girls head to the kitchen. Then it was time to check out each other's schools. Sade tries to make cakes. Sherry takes charge of the cooking and prepares their first meal. The boys couldn't believe the freedom they'd been given, and for the first hour, they just ran riot. Michael was taken to task for throwing sticky popcorn all over the carpet. In the garden. When we leave, in the hall, we'll put it. Our name. Got it, but not forgotten. But soon everybody was crashing the place, as if to see what it would take to make an adult into them. Sherry has made the main course. And for pudding, there's another cake made by Charlie. No, no, put your food over there. Other people have to eat it. By the evening, the mess they'd made was already bothering them. You never expected it to be like this, but I'm really upset that we had like trashed it so badly. We were trying to explain everything that we were to and we got too carried away in ourselves. Those horses really loving me. As Sherry continues to clear up, Nikki and Jessica organise a fashion show.
In the absence of parental discipline, the boys decided to restore order themselves. Sherry is preparing a surprise for the other girls. A party room. By electing George as their leader, the boys had created their own version of a parent figure. And George's first task was to gather up everyone's complaints, almost all of which turned out to be directed at Michael. Okay, Michael's. I'm gonna make a claim for Michael. After the meeting, most of the boys went upstairs to bed. Paul this and Mark, time, it's Gabrielle who starts clearing up, and everyone else joins in. And Luke and Michael decided to sleep downstairs. Suddenly, a cat appears. It's crawled under the garden fence. It's the morning of the second day, and after only a few hours' sleep, the boys are already getting up. Justine takes charge of the cat. There still hasn't been an organised meal, and sugar has been the main source of sustenance. Futile attempts at cleaning the walls are still going on. Everyone had completed a cooking course before the week began. Though at this stage, you wouldn't know it. There were two vegetarians in the house. One was Sim. The other was Luke. Good. By midday, sheer hunger had pushed most of the boys into culinary creativity. Minutes later, Justine pours water over Chardé Ben. I'll go get some sweets for you. Get them all, thinking of Gabrielle, oh, decided to change Gabrielle's food. Now that makes a bit of like cream. Although the boys were getting on well, the big underlying issue was still about who was doing the cleaning. Sherry has a further reason for being upset. Well, everyone's done Earlier some in work. the day, yeah, Gabrielle had told us she was useless. Really? Stone's not so good enough. Well, I'll have had his chocolates and ice cream. <laughs> oh, <laughs> 1.30am, 14 hours into their stay. Sade goes next door to where the other girls are sleeping. Oh, we cook it's horrible. No. When we cook our food, it's disgusting. <laughs> when we cook food. Oh, 
你出来跟我不上路了。Earlier in the evening, Michael decided to sleep in the tent with George, but this only made them a sitting target for the rest of the group. Sherry stayed asleep throughout. By the second evening, several of the boys were saying they were feeling homesick. It was at this point that Sim asked to see his parents. Despite his homesickness, Sim decided to stay in the house. George, who was still trying to be a leader, came inside to look after him. Charlie has cooked sausages and bacon for breakfast. During the course of the morning, an argument's broken out between Kaylee and Shadow. Since there wasn't enough room in the tent for three, George and Michael decided to keep watch over Sim while he tried to get some sleep. Charlie tries to sort things out before they go too far. Keep the door shut! It's really scary. Well, it's not a ghost, but it is a ghost. I've got a film. What is it? That's a sister. Seen that? Have you? Yeah, it's scary, isn't it? Yeah, it's turned its head around. Yeah. What? Yeah, Charlie has one through, for the time being. I'm still here. Okay, I'll tell my mum. Being Kaylee, if I had an argument, I'd pour a whole bottle of water over her head. She'd be trying, she'd be trying yeah. to put stuff in my bed. It was nice. It was so sexy, wasn't she, Jessica? We went to arrange a meeting. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice. You absolutely have to. Yeah. yeah. Since the upset of last night, Sherry has been staying away from the other girls. I can you go inside, please? Do you want to punch? Charlie arranges a meeting to sort out who should do the cooking and cleaning. No, I mean that. Jessica. Oh my God! I'm better at tidying bathrooms and bedding tonight. Please keep the noise down. Sim is actually sleeping. No, he's actually sleeping. At one in the morning, Michael had gone back into the house and left George to sleep alone in the tent with Sam. Despite the rotors drawn up earlier in the day, everyone prepares their own evening meal. The 
mess and lack of organization were still bothering everyone, and there was still lots of argument about who should do what. While the rest of the girls played for out, Sherry had gone outside. Halfway through their stay, and this was the nearest most of them had come to having a wash and changing their clothes. Some were also beginning to talk openly about how much they were looking forward to going home. Luke and Paul, together with Daniel, were emerging as the most assertive boys in the house, and they decided it was time for a communal meal. The seating order was to be a powerful expression of the pecking order in the house. No, sit here, sit here. Yeah. Yeah, because then you can have it. It's like the first meal we're all going to have it together. Hello, Cook Bunny. Nice to see you. Where's the smart ketchup? Where's the 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 
their first group meal. Sim was still washing up. Jessica and Shade By agreeing to do the clearing up for all ten boys, Sim had now finally established his place in the group. Shade, do you like me? Yeah. Are you sure? Michael had been labelled as troublesome ever since spreading popcorn everywhere on the first day. And whatever he did now, the label stuck. gather in the corner of the room where Sherry had slept to tell stories. The girls from Sherry's bedroom are moving with the others. All nine girls are now playing. Most of the girls were asleep by, by the evening of the third day. The group had divided into two gangs: the noisier boys in the big bedroom and the quieter boys in the small one. Sim decided to prefer to be in the smaller room. The boys had slept very little during the week, and it apart from their one group meal, they the mostly eaten cereal and sweets, and didn't finally settle down until four o'clock. The atmosphere was becoming hysterical and aggressive. Almost everything had now been destroyed. Michael was made the scapegoat, and his increasingly strange behaviour made him an easy target. Everything we're going to clear up will be messed up in like five minutes. There's no point. I just said, 
Well, how come you think the traffic clock is late? Well, I think they might be. Well, I'm going to go to the hedgehog. Chill out. I'm going to go to the hedgehog. Yeah, chill out. 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 Chill Sade stays away. By the afternoon, the boys decided they wanted to speak to Dr. Scott, the program's child psychiatrist, about Michael. In the meeting, the boys initially all turned against Michael, who watched on from his bed. Eventually, he denied he'd been responsible for breaking everything. Eventually, the others agreed they were also to blame. Dr. Scott suggested the boys try to work together more as a group. The meeting over, Michael remained curled up in his bed. I'm not playing until Michael's played, alright? Oh, yeah. yeah, we're a group! Well, like, it's well fun! Come on, trust me, it's wicked! No, I want to play man Because most people don't leave it. Say this is a bike, but it's not. Everyone be quiet! The attempts to organise a group game turned instead into something more aggressive. Hunt the hedgehog. At this point, the film crew decided to intervene. has been done since yesterday morning. At 10.30, Robert, Sim, Alex and George, in the smaller bedroom, decided to have an early night. But the rest of the group, in the bigger bedroom, were determined to keep them away. She's not going to go home, guys. It's an expression to try to do that. Don't worry, you're making more Robert took on the role of defending the boys in the quieter room. This time, no one tried to get her out. War had been declared between the two rooms. On the morning of the final the day, for an hour. it was the five boys no in the smaller bedroom around. who woke first. Eventually, she comes Having out Having been kept up for most of the night, they decided to get their own back on the other five boys in the big bedroom.
it's getting on. And once again, the girls try to sleep. But for the fourth night running, Sade stays up late. And she's joined by Jessica. stay in the house and Nikki has had a bad night. She ended up sharing her bed with two other girls. Throughout the week, loyalties had been constantly shifting. With Sam's defection, it was now six against four. Just as when Sherry left, the remaining girls huddled together in the corner of the bedroom, and they stay there for most of the night. Although upset, Robert chose not to ring the bell for adult help. Later, they all go downstairs to make cards for their parents. They were now in a state of siege, waiting for the week to end. The dancing team, choreographed by Shaz, starts the evening off. Come on. 
Can we put this all behind us? Come on, we can be friends again. Turn over a new leaf. No, right? Shut up! I'm not going to Five days after entering the house, the boys rejoined their parents. Time's come home, but the girls are sleeping late. Those During the children's parents stay, nearly their parents had been able to see a live transmission of what had been going on. On a monitor at the back of the house. Two of the children have left, oh, and eight have stayed. Annoyed. Close friendships Everything have grown basically. and split apart, and then reformed. Okay. Though the girls have argued <laughs> yeah, and fought, they've also been able to forgive each other, to comfort each other when it's safe, to help each other. Rebecca Madley is 11 years old yes, and already weighs 11 it's stone. Nice image, say. Yeah. This is it. She was born with a genetic thing. disorder called prader willi syndrome, or PWS. Yes. They're classed as mentally retarded sort of thing. They'll get to sort of a baseline. 